Okay, so hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the second segment of the log flow and script projects. So the main objective is to just kind of learn the sum of the key shortcuts required to do script pain, pain efficiently. And also some of the script diagnostics from China are debugging the sum of the hard code when you try to um, play in the some parts to use script code. And also thinking about the get the with the function to find identify the work directory and then how we can change it. And like this very different things and let it have maybe relevant window path and main and rims path and also like absolute and relative path. And it's very large to be project. So he had kind of brief agenda for the two phase phase project. So Let's move to the next. So uh, I think everyone can see the screenshots for the. Uh, you see, I have a little problem about the sound, like the metallic kind of sound. So, uh, yeah, I still hear it. I don't know if it's only me. Mm, oh, okay. So maybe I think that let me change my. Uh, my, my... I think now you are fine. <laughs> yeah, now you're fine. Now let's okay. try again. So now okay, let's try. Uh, now, it, now it's back. Now it's back. <laughs> so now, now are you okay with this? So voice is clear? Yeah, yeah, this one it's is better. better. It's better. Okay, okay. Is it okay to keep going on? Yeah. Yeah, continue. Okay. All right, so so first one I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about what is called the scripts. So as we know, because we actually so far we actually try to be using a different so, Actually, I'm sorry, it's still yeah. very very choppy metallic. -y. Okay, let me change my, my headset, okay? Just just hold on. How was it right now? Is that good? Sounds clear. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. Okay, so I will continue. So today I'm gonna get right in here is to talk about the scripts. So, so far we actually try to do the, what is called the console kind of a packages, uh, console kind of a screen. So in here, like uh, here is the console part, like uh, just kind of a line by, just kind of a line by line kind of a command execution. But but it is actually kind of a complicated and then you know, sometimes we actually try to try to do more complicated coding or try to make it the more like a programming kind of like a analysis. We actually using the kind of a code editor like a like a script editor like up to the top in this one. So this one is a, what is called the editor. So we actually Typing the all of the code that we wanted to learn, and then try to try to uh execute it or learn learn the script as a whole, so that we can get the kind of a uh result for the for the, our coding. So that's the kind of a what script is about, and then and then when we move down here, how we can learn the code actually. There is a kind of a two different kind of a shortcuts. So actually, in the in the book, we we actually know about the kind of a control, control enter, or uh, alt enter, and then a control enter. I mean, maybe this one is a maybe mistype. So control enter or maybe command or alt enter. So actually, those are the a little bit different. Cause uh, for example, when you try to learn the, uh maybe in here, run the code by itself in here, uh, maybe when you try to control, actually, whenever you run the code, actually cursor move to the next line like this. You can see the cursor is automatically moving to the next code chunks, right? 
But art, when you try to type in the art enter, it the cursor is a still stay dead line. Okay. So that's the kind of a little bit slightly different. So depending on the what I don't know what which one is the more convenient, it actually depending on the, your preferences. But in case of the control enter, it actually run the code and then the cursor is gonna be automatically moved to the next line of the code like this. Or maybe we can sometimes use like uh, blocking the blocking the code and then R center it's gonna be the same thing to run the code. So that's the kind of a little bit difference about the keyboard shortcut, like a control enter and R center. And then a control shift S or command shift S in case of the map, that is a kind of a run the, run the whole script at a time. So when you, for example, when you try to control shift S, it actually try to try to do the this kind of a source kind of a command and then just kind of a run the code as it is. Okay. That's the how it is uh, how we can learn in the code. And then uh, as you can see here, we, you can actually find about uh, this function, like a source function. Maybe sometimes it is a very useful kind of a case. For example, maybe if you can uh, maybe have a, a, some of the R code only include a set of the functions in R and then, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, you have a kind of a main main analysis uh, chunk of code in R. Maybe you can actually using like a source command and function dot R. That means you can actually run the, um, uh, import the all of the customized function in the this R code into the this main code. Sometimes it is also very useful to try to do this way because because we sometimes try to uh, have a chance to just customizing the, our own function. In that case, maybe if you can writing the, all of the, those kind of functions into the one R uh, script, that might, that actually uh, make, a, make a, your code is a very long. And also it is hard to figure out the, where is the main functions and then where is the, my main analysis is about. So in that case, we can just try to separate the those customizing functions into the separate R, R script. And then by using the source, uh, source functions, we can just directly sourcing from the that R code into the main, our main analysis code. That might be also very useful kind of approaches. Actually, I use in those kind of approaches a lot. So this might be the also one way you can do uh about the about the coding learning the code so like you can actually try to try to just kind of a uh, um uh, uh writing the code consisting of the all of the functions and then in the main main uh analysis code you can just using the co uh, source code source function you just importing the all of the those functions you need into the that main analysis i code that might be also kind of a good way to do that. And also in the book, it also says that the always start with your script with the uh, packages you need. That means actually whenever you uh, you using you try to coding the R, you always start like a library kind of function and then a set of the library packages. So importing the package first, and then you can you can keep writing the your code at uh, uh, below. That actually help help the uh, help other people to recognize uh, what kind of uh, packages you actually using for the uh for for your analysis. So that might be also kind of very useful to do that. And also it talks about the R Studio diagnostics diagnostics, which means it's kind of a, how we can debugging the, our code, like how we can identify the error and then how our studio help us to recognize in those error or problematic kind of a line of code. So whenever you looking at the, maybe sometimes you looking at the R code, you will see that this kind of a little icon, like a X icon or this kind of a expression kind of a 
symbol icon, that means you that line has a kind of a little bit problem in terms of the, some of the grammatical critical problem, which actually generating the error messages. And then this one is also kind of another expression kind of an error. So you can, R Studio gonna help you to recognize that this kind of error by uh, by showing the, this kind of a little icon in the, next to the those lines. And also it talks about the saving and naming things. Uh, this one is actually kind of a, uh, kind of a rule of thumb kind of a uh, principle kind of thing. So what I wanted to say is there is actually no rule about the saving, the naming kind of thing. It's actually depending on the, your personal preferences. But sometimes uh, just kind of a naming, file naming correctly going to be help the other people to recognize the, what that file is about. So maybe in the book, it actually says about the file name should be the machine readable. That means avoid the spaces and symbol and also special characters. And then don't rely on the character sensitivity to distinguish files. So that means like do not use the case sensitive kind of things to step uh, to uh, differentiate it, your file name. And also file name should be the human readable. So that means we have to recognize the, we also by uh, identifying the file name by itself gonna be uh, rec uh, recognizable to the other people so that what that file is about. And also file name, we should be, should play well without uh, read the default ordering. So that means if we can try to, try to find name like a, like a zero one and zero two, like this, zero three, like a, as a kind of a, kind of a sequence, type of the, our uh, type of the coding uh, naming scheme gonna be help us to the, Okay, this one's gonna be the first first code we have to learn, and then a second, and then a third one. So that also gonna be help us to do that. And and also I just kind of adding the one useful link about the more file naming convention. So when you're looking at the, these file naming functions, uh okay, so yeah, I also share the this one. And then, yes, I really actually mentioned about the, yeah, spaces is a very good to be avoided. Yeah, because the spaces is kind of like a very, very uh, tricky because when we, especially when we try to, uh, try to read the file into the R or other programming languages. Maybe we can actually, our rule of thumb is uh, maybe we can, when we try to do these things, we, we actually using the underscore kind of thing, like a, like a analysis or maybe version one dot R like this. So but, uh, instead of the using uh, the spaces, we sometimes using the underscore to separate the file name to the R like this. And then uh, sometimes we also using the some date, like a uh, two zero two three, maybe zero nine two four underscore, maybe name underscore version one dot r. A little bit long, but we can actually naming this way too. Cause of if if the date is also very very critical to the differentiating the file name, that might be the possible. And also sometimes we actually try to be uh, tracking the our version to the V1 or V2 or V2.2, et cetera. That might be also gonna be helpful. So, so that's kind of things we can try to do that. And also Jeremy also talk about the, uh, you use the function path uh, sanitized from the uh, functions R packages to check the name, okay, maybe. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. This one is also gonna be a good way to do that. Like, uh, try to, uh, like, uh, um, uh, on here. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't. 
Yeah, I didn't know about the, this one because I didn't use it. But yeah, I think that this one is also very useful tip we can also talk about. So it is great. So thank you for the comment. Okay. So that's the one thing we can also do. And then in the 7.2 about the projects, actually there is a there is a kind of a the textbook actually mentioned about the two different kind of issues like uh, what is the source of the truth and then where is the, uh, your analysis live. So first of all, when we think about the source of the truth means like uh, we actually try to do tell the R studio not to preserve the, your workspace between the sessions. That means whenever you done with the one set of the sessions, maybe it might be the very useful to restart the R functions like a control shift F10 function 10 or a control shift zero, gonna be restarting the R sessions. And also try control shift S is a rerun the, re the R script. So this gonna be the very useful, especially for the sometimes when you try to install the R, R packages, you sometimes have you sometimes have a problem with uh, installing the packages due to because that package is already already learn learning in the R Studio. In that case, you can actually restart the R by using the Control Shift function ten, and then install the that packages. That might be uh that might be uh executable to to run the uh, install the packages sometimes, especially for the updating the your packages. Maybe sometimes you have to restart your R Studio and then install the dev packages. And then the other one is the where the your analysis live is a kind of like a, um, matter of the how we can define or identify the our working directory. So get wd function is the we just identifying the current working directory, and then a set wd is the kind of a changing the working directory. Actually, this one is uh, changing the absolute path of the directory. So it is not that recommended because uh, the reason why we we are not, we do not use the set w function is because of the most of the time we actually try to build up the what is called the RStudio projects. So when we try to create the RStudio projects, it is very simple. Like uh, when you using the R code in here, and then go to the file, and then you can click the new project projects. And then you will see this kind of a new project widget, and then you can click the new directory, and then uh, you can actually set up the what kind of a uh, project type you want to do that, like a R package development or shiny application, etc. But in, in our case, maybe we can do the new projects, and then we can Designating the our directory name to making one, or maybe we can browsing the uh browsing the some of uh, our uh some existing directory, and then we can actually clicking the that one, and then you can actually designating those things, and then you can click the create creating the projects that actually allows you to the creating the new projects, okay. Actually, this picture shows about how you can do these things in your desktop kind of things. And also the one last thing is that we actually talk about the relative and absolute path. So relative path is uh, relative to the working directory, like a project home, because whenever we creating the, what is the good, uh, good things about the projects is we can, uh, we don't have to worry about the, our path because so whenever we creating the creating the project like like this, it actually automatically allows us to the that uh, set up the that directory, that working directory is automatically defined and identifying when you try to creating the that uh, projects and then uh, when what we can do is uh, whenever we have a data set or other kind of a file we have to import the analysis we just only copy and pasting the that file into the our R projects and then we can using that one very easily in the in the project R studio projects uh, uh, situations 
that's the actually what the relative path is uh, good about. So, and then the absolute path is a kind of a, uh, path about uh, about the all of the these detailed information like a C dot users my my username and desktop etc. So it is actually mentions about the full path. So it does not actually it is not directly associated with uh, uh, our project directory. It just kind of a separately kind of a uh, designating to the absolute location of the maybe some of the folders or files. So normally when we try to creating the new uh, new R Studio projects, our our working directory is automatically uh, defined. So we don't have to worry about the changing the absolute path. And also it is not recommended to to designating to the working directory by using the set wp function. And also you can actually in here, maybe when you go up to the, in maybe I think in here, like the session menu, you can actually set up the, this, you can actually set up the choose the directory like this, but this one is actually designating about the absolute path, which is not recommendable. When once you creating the projects, it is automatically identifying the your path, and then uh, you can only working within the that working project working directory, and then uh, that is all more convenient to to working on the your R code and then managing the your data set and then your code R code chunks within the same within the one single integrated project directory. Okay. So well, how we can and then uh, sometimes we actually try to designate the relative path in, in case of the, when we try to using the R Studio, R, uh, R Studio projects. So in that case, Mac or Linux kind of a uh, system, we only use, uh, we can use the slash, like uh, this kind of uh, format, like uh, slash users, slash Hadley, slash documents, slash, uh, maybe data and diamond .esv. Maybe in terms of the windows, we actually using the two backrests because of the single backrests actually in R, single backrests has uh, some of the specific functions. For example, like a, like a one single backslash like a T or a single backslash uh, N. This one is actually new new line break and then uh, actually it's a single back uh, single back rashes to the T is a kind of a tap kind of a function. So it actually have a, have a separate functions and then uh, it is a very, actually R Studio give you the error when you try to use the one single back rashes to the designating to the working directory or some of the path. So instead of the doing that, actually in the window systems, we actually using the two back rests. And also you can using the, this one, the slash and back rests. So you can actually choose the one of the two, okay? So either way will be, uh, either way actually work very well. And when you try to run the, uh, run the R studio, okay? So maybe you can using the two back rests or maybe you can changing the back rests to the one single uh, slash. Either way, work in the R Studio. So it depends on you or your preferences about the, how you can define to the to the path for for the importing or designating the some of the locations for your projects. Okay. And then move down here. Yeah, I think that this is it. And then uh, when we try to go uh, looking at the exercise, it actually asking about the go to the Twitter account and then uh, some finding the one tip looks interesting and then a practice to the using it. So when you click the Twitter, like the R Studio tips, you can actually find that these kind of R Studio tips kind of a Twitter. And then, uh, I think that this one 
is a very interesting. So when you try to, what this one actually about is so when you try to wrapping the library to call with the curly, uh, curly brackets, you can actually uh, shrinking those things into the one single code and then you just learn that single line uh, 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 to learn the, all of the, those libraries. So that means maybe in here, when we try to do the, like a blanket, and then when we try to do this, it's, it seems like we can actually do grouping the this kind of line of code. We can actually selecting the all of the, these blocks and then learn the code like this, or maybe we can just uh, shrinking the this one and then adjust uh, learn the this single line also the same functions. So with the bracket inside the bracket, it is uh, learn the all of the those library functions automatically executed. So which is the very good functions. Maybe I think that this might be also work very well in case of the, this this one. I hope. Yeah, it's also the same thing in here. Yeah. Also the R code can be do that, like with the curly curly bracket, we can actually grouping the those line of chunks. And then maybe we can expanding or collapsing the those code and then uh, we can learn the uh run the expanding or collapsing kind of a status. Okay. And then uh, the other one good tip we can also talk about is uh, this one. So this one is a kind of a function is uh, for the multiple multiple source layout panel. I think that this one is also very interesting to try that out. Because uh, in here, for example, when you go to the tool and global options, I think that this one is a new functions uh, newly added about the recent RStudio version. So when you go to the pay layout, you can see that there is a, a button called add column. When you when you click the this add column, it keep adding the this kind of a source called column up to the three in the left side of the window. And then when you can see the apply, you can see the all of the those three blanking uh source uh scripter gonna be open. Okay. Or maybe maybe if you don't need it that much, you can remove the those column by clicking the remove the column like this. This one is a very cool option. And then I just want to introduce to you about the design a little tip. For the when you try to try to looking at the multiple R code at the same time in the same window screen, you uh, in the screen. So you actually try to using the this kind of a global function, go to the panel layout, and then adding the column to see the multiple R code at the same time. Okay. Okay. And then, um, and then the next one is, uh, what the other common mistakes about the R Studio diagnostic report. So read the, this one and then to find out. So when you click the, this one, you can actually see about the code diagnostic in the RStudio IDEs. And then there is a whole chunk of the diagnostic techniques. We can see that here. And then we already know about the, these little symbols. And then, yeah, I don't know, cause uh, this one is a kind of, uh, yeah, very interesting, but sometimes maybe, uh, Uh, in here, maybe when we, let's see, when we looking up to the maybe top, I think that we actually covered the most of the, this part, I guess. So, and then uh, these, as you can see, when you go to the that global functions and then click go to the code, you can actually control the, all of the those co uh, code diagnostics. There's a lot of function. Actually, most of the default is the order of the check so that you can recognize the those function errors 
as many as possible and then so that you can easily recognize the those function and then debugging the code. And then, um, yeah, I think that this is it. So do you have any questions so far or anything? Yeah. So because this chapter is a very simple and then you know, I just kind of uh, not nothing too much to talk about. So yeah. And then also most of the parties are actually as our users, we sometimes we already know about the some of the function and then you know, we already know we already have a, our own way to looking at the, how we can manage the script and then the projects. So if you have any questions or anything to discuss. No questions, but this was a really interesting chapter. I really like it. I feel like I don't um explore the RStudio IDE enough. Because mm -hmm. like there's so many things, like so many cool things and shortcuts you can do. And yeah, that was really good. I like I really like this chapter. Um, um yeah, because of yeah, in case of the script is the kind of like maybe uh the kind of a naming and saving is gonna be the our based on the, our preferences and then experiences. And then uh maybe it's gonna be very useful to know about a little bit familiar get familiar with the, some of the shortcuts that gonna be help you to to uh working on the R studio more efficiently. In case of the projects, as you can say. As you mentioned, actually, project is uh, some of kind of a game changers because uh, project actually allows us to the managing the our path for the data to import. At the same time, we can also easily managing the our code our code chunks very efficiently and then easily. And also, when when we looking at the some of the R functions, there is also kind of a very useful functions that we can look at. So I personally strongly recommend you to the check out the, these R Studio tips Twitter. Because there might have I actually showing the two examples about the studio tips, but there might be much uh there are be maybe many of them to uh, uh that help us to the learn the R code or managing the R R coding programming more efficiently. So feel free to check out the, this one. I actually follow the, this R code, R studio tips. I think that there is a lot of uh, good tips in here. So maybe you just uh, feel free to check it out and then uh, you can use it in your own way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the presentation today. Mm -hmm. uh,